So have you had enough of Microsoft spying on you? Well, today we're gonna put an end to it. Stay tuned. What I'm doing on my computer is none of your business. So I interrupt this video to bring you our sponsor, which is me. If you guys like this channel, then please help support this channel by picking up some t-shirts like this one here, tech support. I'm in it for the cash. Hey, hey, don't forget mine. Make freedom oh. cool again. Come on, That's this true. has gotta be the coolest one we got. Whoa, whoa, wait a second. This is a tech channel. You can't do a t-shirt commercial with have you tried turning it on or off again. Come on, am I right? Why y'all keep leaving Leroy out of these things? I like to show off my shirt too. But you don't even have a t-shirt on. I sure do. I'm in a complicated relationship with Facebook's community standards. Yeah. That's true. You definitely do go to blows with Facebook's community standards. He's not lying. With that being said, definitely go to my YouTube page, click on the store tab and check out what t-shirts I have available. If there's something you like, then go ahead and pick it up because it helps me out a lot. Now back to the video. So I want to get this out of the way right out of the gate. But if I sound a little congested today, that's because I am. I just got over a cold recently and I'm still massively congested. I feel great, but unfortunately I still can't breathe. But you know, it is what it is. I still wanted to get the video out today, so I figured it's good enough. So anyway, today I'm going to show you how to disable Microsoft's telemetry. Now, Microsoft has been spying on us since Windows 8 and 10, and unfortunately it still happens happens in Windows 11 and it's pretty much the same thing. However, it's been really popular in the past to be able to use programs and stuff like that to disable telemetry as well as, you know, debloat windows. Now, we're not going to go much into debloating today. We're going to do that in a future video. Today, we're just going to concentrate on the telemetry itself. We're going to stop Microsoft from spying on our computers, but we're going to do it manually. And the reason why I want to do it manually today is cuz I want to show you how to actually disable this stuff individually so that way you know exactly what's happening because typically what will happen is when you use these scripts or programs to disable this stuff a lot of the times you don't understand exactly what's going on when you're disabling this stuff so what could happen is it could break something that you might need and you don't know how to fix it however if you do it manually you'll know each step that you took and if it breaks something you can always go back and change one of the settings that you made in order to get to the point where you were. And I'll explain all the different settings that we're changing as we're doing it. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here is that you don't have to follow every single one of the tips that I'm going to give you today. I'm just going to show you how to completely lock down your privacy in a Windows 11 system. And most of these tips will work in Windows 10 as well, but might be a little bit different in how you get to some of these settings. But if there's certain programs or settings that you specifically use, you don't have to necessarily follow every single thing I'm doing, I'm just going to show you the best way to completely lock down your privacy on your system. Now, I have a fresh copy of Windows 11 installed on the system right now, and the reason why I did it that way is because I wanted a universal way to be able to explain to you guys how to do this. Now, if you've had Windows 11 installed for a while, you should be able to follow these same tips and have the same results. So now, without further ado, let's get onto the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so the first and most important setting that you need to change for Windows 11 privacy, and this goes for Windows 10 as well, is don't use a Microsoft account. And the way you check this is click on start the start button, click on settings, and then go into accounts right here. And right here you can see that I'm using a local account. So if you're using a Microsoft account, the first thing I would do before you follow any more of this video is change your account to a local account. By changing it to a local account, you actually stop Microsoft from being able to tie whatever data they collect to a specific individual. So that's one of the best things you can do for your privacy is don't use a Microsoft account. So let's get back to it. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna go ahead and remove a couple programs here. So the first one that I wanna remove is OneDrive. So you go ahead and click on the Start button and type in Control Panel, and then go ahead and open it up, click on Uninstall a Program, and then select OneDrive from the list and just push Uninstall. Now you're gonna get a little pop-up that's gonna come up here, and then once you get that, go ahead and hit Yes. 
OneDrive is now gone. However, it's probably going to re reinstall itself next time you run Windows Update. So keep an eye on it. You may have to come back and uninstall it again. The next program we're going to uninstall, you have to uninstall it a different way. So let me show you. Click on the Start button, go into All Apps, and then scroll down until you find Microsoft Teams. And once you find Microsoft Teams, go ahead and right click on it and hit uninstall and push the uninstall button. And then that should get rid of Microsoft Teams. Okay, so now let's get into settings and start changing some privacy settings here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into notifications right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn notifications off right here. And you know, to be honest with you, this has nothing to do with privacy. It's just the fact that notifications in Windows are extremely annoying. So that's how you get rid of them. And it'll get rid of most of them. It might not get rid of all of them, but it will get rid of most of them. You can also come down here and you can uncheck offer suggestions and get tips when you use Windows. You can uncheck both of these and that'll get rid of most of the notifications that you receive. So then the next thing, we're gonna go back into system here and we're gonna change some of the advertising settings on here. So to do that, we go down into private privacy and security. And then from privacy and security, we want to go ahead and click on general. And then in the general tab, we want to uncheck all four of these right here. And that's it. And now the next thing we want to do, we want to go back up into privacy and security again, and then we're going to go into speech recognition. Now on some systems like mine right here, speech recognition might already be turned off by default. And if it is, then great, you can just move on to the next step. But if it isn't, go ahead and switch it off and then we can move on. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go back into privacy and security again. We're gonna stay in this section for most of this video right here. And then we're gonna come down to inking and typing personalization. And from there, we can go ahead and flip that one off too. Okay, so the next setting we're going to change, we're going to jump back into privacy and security again. And then we're going to go down to location. So we're going to have to scroll down to location right here. Now with location services, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. We can actually completely turn off location services or we can turn them off for an app by app basis. Now by disabling their location services, some apps may not work. Like for instance, your weather app isn't gonna be able to detect where you are, so you'll have to enter it in manually if you'd like to get the local weather with your weather app. But by turning location services off, this will stop apps from being able to determine the location of your system. And it's probably a good service to shut off, in my opinion, but let's get back to it. Okay, so like I said, you can actually go through and you can choose to turn off location services on an app by app basis. You can turn it on or off based on your preference, or you can just turn it off completely. And if you turn it off completely, then no apps or programs are going to be able to use location services. Okay, so now the next one we're going to go into, we're going to go back again to privacy and security, and this time we're going to go into diagnostics and feedback. Now, this is an important section right here because this is the majority where Microsoft's telemetry is at. And the first thing that we're going to do in here is we're going to go ahead and the send optional diagnostic data, we're going to shut that off. And then we're going to come down to tailored experiences, go ahead and open that, and we're going to shut that off as well. And then we're going to scroll down some more. And right here where you see feedback frequency, we're going to change this one to never. So this means it'll never send feedback to Microsoft. And then we're going to go ahead and delete diagnostic data right here. And then when you push the delete button, it'll go ahead and delete it. And it will tell you the last time it was deleted. Now, when you turn off the optional diagnostic data, you may notice that it's still sending the required diagnostic data to Microsoft. And you know, we don't want to send that either. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to disable that because there isn't an obvious way to disable it from the GUI, but there is a way to turn it off and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go into is we're gonna scroll down to Windows Update from this point. And then from Windows Update, we wanna go into Advanced Options. And then we wanna go down to Delivery Optimization. So the way Delivery Optimization works is it gives you a couple of different options. It will allow you to download updates from other computers that have already downloaded those updates. Now you can set this a couple of different ways. You can turn it off completely, which means that every time you download an update, it has to come directly from Microsoft, 
or you can have it only download from computers on your local network. At least that way you know that you're gonna be getting these updates from other systems on your network. You can also set it to get it from any computer, so you could literally be downloading updates from my computer. And that, I think, is a little creepy, and I don't know if I would trust that setting. Now, by default, it's only set to download them from your local network. So you can choose to leave it that way, I think it's pretty safe, or you can shut it off completely. All right, so for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off completely, but just for clarity, I typically leave this on for devices on my local network, just because it makes my life a lot easier when I'm doing updates, because I do have several systems. So, but anyway, I'm gonna shut this off just for the example right here. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and close settings now, and the next thing is we're gonna actually open up our Windows security. Now, if you're using another antivirus instead of Windows Defender, then you can pretty much disregard this next section because your privacy settings are gonna be completely different based on whatever antivirus you happen to be using. However, I recommend using Windows security because it works pretty good and it's free, so why not? But there is ways to make it more private, so to speak. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna click on virus and threat protection here, and you wanna go down to virus and threat protection settings, and go ahead and click on the manage settings link here. And then from here, you definitely wanna leave real-time protection on. However, you can flip off the cloud delivered protection, then go ahead and hit yes. And you can also, where it says automatic sample submission, you can turn this off as well. Now, you're gonna notice these little exclamation marks right here. And if you go over to your side right here, you'll see that it's actually giving you a warning right there. And if you don't want that warning to be there, just go ahead and click the dismiss sign right here. And it'll go ahead and get rid of those warnings. And then your icon will look like normal. And the warning shouldn't come back, at least I don't think they will. Okay, for, so from this point, we're gonna go ahead and close Windows Security, and the next section we're gonna go into is we're gonna go into services themselves. So we're gonna go ahead and click the Start button, type in Services, and go ahead and click in the Services Snap in here. And then from here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to scroll down until you see Connected User Experience and Telemetry. So we're gonna scroll down here, Connected user experience telemetry right here. And then you wanna go ahead and double click that one, set it from automatic to disabled, push the stop button, and then push OK. And then that should disable the telemetry service itself. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and close services and we're gonna open up our scheduled tasks. So from there, click the start button and just type in scheduled tasks and you're gonna get your task scheduler right here. And then once that opens up, I typically like to make this a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to use, but you can do it any way you want. We're gonna open up the task schedule library. We're gonna go into Microsoft, then we're gonna go into Windows, and then from here, we wanna look for application experience. And then from here, you're gonna have four different scheduled tasks, and you can actually go through and disable all of these right here. And then the next section we wanna go into is customer experience. So if we scroll down here, you'll see right here, customer experience improvement program. And you're gonna have two services in here or two scheduled tasks in here that you wanna disable. So go ahead and disable both of those. Now, in a previous video, I recommended just to delete those tasks completely. However, I found out that if you delete the tasks, then next time you run Windows Update, it may actually re-add those tasks in and turn them back on. So I think the odds of those tasks not being turned on again is better if you just disable them instead of deleting them. But deleting them works too, so you can do whatever you want. Okay, so now the next section we're going to go into, now we're going to dig into the registry. And this is going to go back to what we talked about before. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Start button, open Settings again real quick so we can go back to Privacy and back to di Diagnostic Feedback. So from here, you can see it is still sending required data. That's what we're going to turn off now. So what I want you to do is go ahead and click on the Start button, type in RegEdit, and go ahead and open your registry editor, and it's gonna ask you here, so you're gonna wanna hit yes, and then your registry editor will open. And then from here, what we wanna do is we wanna go into local machine, software, then we wanna go into policy, right here. Then we wanna go into Microsoft, 
and then scroll down. We want to go into Windows. If you need to, you can actually stretch this out a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to see where you're at. And then from there, we want to scroll down until we see data collection. Now, as you can see, data collection is completely empty. There's nothing in there. That's because we need to actually make a value first. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click. You're going to go to new and you're going to hit D word 32 bit value. And then from there, we want to name this allow telemetry. And then go ahead and hit enter. And we want to go ahead and leave this at zero. If you already have allow telemetry in your registry, which you probably shouldn't have it, but if you do, you want to make sure to change this. If you set it to one, it's actually going to give you the, it's actually going to enable the telemetry that we want disabled. So we want to go ahead and set this to zero and hit OK. And so that essentially means allow telemetry is zero, meaning no, don't allow telemetry. And at this point, in order for that to take effect, you have to reboot the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot the computer now, and I'll see you back in Windows. All right, we're back in Windows now, and I'm going to show you what we did. We're going to go ahead and click the Start button, click on Settings. We're going to go down to Privacy and Security, and then we're going to select Diagnostic and Feedback. And as you can see, Diagnostic Data is completely turned off now. And it essentially says some of these settings are managed by your organization, so you actually can't change any of these settings at this point. But that's okay, because we know how to change it back if we ever get to that point. So now that we've actually gone through and we've changed all these settings manually, if we ever have any issues with anything that we did, we know how to go back and actually change some of these settings back. So if for any reason you need some of this stuff re-enabled, it's really easy to re-enable. All you have to do is do the reverse of what you did to disable it in the first place. We didn't do anything that irreparably changes the way that the system functions. We just turn things off and hopefully this should completely eliminate any kind of access to Microsoft phoning home. However, there are other steps that you can take if you're a little bit more paranoid. And you know, I'm not even necessarily saying you shouldn't take these because some of them are actually pretty good steps. But if you have followed a video that I did a while back setting up a Pi hole on your network, it's essentially a Raspberry Pi DNS server that is used for ad blocking. You can get custom lists that will block all of Microsoft's telemetry servers. And that's a really good way to block Microsoft's telemetry because in those cases, you don't have to change any settings. It just blocks Microsoft right at the source. However, those lists right there sometimes can be a little iffy. And I have had instances where I've heard some people complaining that they will block Windows Update sometimes. And that's definitely not something that you want to do. So make sure you pick your lists very carefully if you decide to go that route. But you can also disable a Pi-Holes DNS server for a temporary period of time if you need to run Windows Update. You just got to make sure to stay on it. But anyway, if this was helpful to you, then please like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I do a new video every week. In fact, hopefully next week, I won't be this congested. But hey, I'm not congested in these videos here, so check them out. Have a great day.